Now that we're talking about the movie that started or gave us the story that I've mentioned before, I gotta hit you with it one more time. And that is my pops, my father, who is post-movie, dropped off his date, headed home in his little Volkswagen Beetle. He's cruising home, he looks in the rear view mirror, and the one and only Reagan is in the back. But not just regular Reagan, not I want a horse, mommy. The the lick me Reagan. I was like, mm, pause. He had to pull over and take a moment to himself. All right. You've heard this story before, but I had to mention it. Welcome to I Just Watched. I'm Joseph. Welcome back to another Retro Rewind. And again, this is only the beginning, so I have to kind of hit you with the rules and regs real quick. If the entity, movie, show, whatever we're discussing or your request is five years or older, five years or older, it qualifies, it can be requested, and we can discuss it. And just in case it wasn't super clear or clear enough, we're talking The Exorcist, the original, the classic. Let's jump into it. Spoiler warning, just in case you haven't seen it, but sheesh, it's been a minute. You should have by now. So I've definitely seen this movie a couple times here and there throughout my lifetime. And there's things about this movie I absolutely love. There's a few things that don't quite make sense for me, but at the same time, I gotta take into account this movie came out in 73. So you can't be like, mm, those effects look crazy. They look so fake. I'm like, bro, in 73, I bet they look stupid real. All right, you know? So I can't be like, the CG in this movie was terrible. I can't watch this no more. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm not gonna knock it for that. However, there are definitely some questions I have that haven't been answered in multiple viewings. I had to do extra research to find that. So Reagan, apparently like in the book, the reason she is possessed or what opened her up to possession, white people shit, she was playing with the Huica, all right? She was playing with the Ouija board and was it Captain Howdy? And the mom was like, I'll play with you. I was like, what the, and who's, why? why? Every time I watch this movie, she's like, look what I found. It's Captain Howdy. Is my mom pretty? And the mom's like, hmm, that's rude. I'm like, but you gonna let her play with this in front of you? Do you not know what that is? <sighs> White people, crazy, bro. But now that we know, that's what opened it up. Because, like I said, it doesn't really go in, into depth in the movie. Like, what happened was this. And now that's why the demon showed up and was like, she's mine. I did some research, and apparently in the book, it's a little bit more clear. I haven't read the book. One of my biggest questions is, Yo, what the, what's the whole point in the beginning with uh, the father Marin when he's like in the dig and he finds a little weird statue thing? I always expected at some point it was going to end up in that house or something, plus the Ouija board. Like it was going to be a combination of things. But he sees that, you see the statue, that, then he sees again in the middle of the exorcist when she's like this and you see it behind her. And I was like, cool, but there's no real connection here. And like the demon's name is Pazuzu. If I'm saying it correctly, I probably am not. So I apologize, not to the demon, but to the audience. Another one was how did Demi's mom die? Cause last time we saw her, she was in the hospital. She was hella sad. She's like, why would you do this to me? Why would you put me here? And then at the party, she's like, yeah, she died alone in the house. When did she go home? I thought she was in the hospital, kind of semi being taken care of. So when did we go from there to La Casita? Is there a deleted scene maybe? Is there? I wouldn't be surprise but this is what happened this is how his mother ended up home alone and died and then she was there for a few days to me in the beginning you see him visiting her it very much seemed like he would visit consistently maybe daily or something at the end of his shift and this one theory that's going around because i was also curious like why did it kill dennings like that dude was just drunk an idiot but like why did it take him out so quickly and I've read online that apparently supposedly i don't know if it's legit or not he was being abusive towards Reagan and it's not like the demon was standing up for her in that essence but the demon was like f that you got to go to how did father Marin die like he was about to lay down the God, law of God on her right like he was like mm, the power of Christ compels you bitch homeboy walks in and he's just on the bed I was like he just took a pill so what's going on again research apparently he had a heart disease and because yes he's older he lost the fight against his heart disease which killed him but i was like what timing <laughs> i always thought it was the demon who killed him somehow just unexplained maybe the demon did kill him maybe it was like mm, your heart kind of thing but i would have loved a little bit of an answer there and then my biggest question is what happened to the demon when demi or carreras takes it for one he was powerful enough or lively enough or faithful enough to have that moment and be like no and yeet himself out the window because you can see him turn back to him but my big question is what happened to the demon after he took off because and he you know died i was why wouldn't it go back to to reagan is it because demi took it in willingly and when he killed himself it went back to its domain like little questions like that, I still have to this day. Clearly I've done some research to provide some kind of answers to some of these, but little things like that just always every time I watch them, I'm like, why 
Isn't there two, three lines of dialogue or a little scene here or something that could explain or give us a little bit more of these answers just to make this a little bit more stable? Don't get me wrong. The moment when she's going to work with the crucifix and she's like, lick me, mom. I was like, oh my God. I was a grown ass man when I saw this. First time I saw this, we was flooded in. It was me, my two cousins, and one of my cousin's fiance. We was chilling. We was trapped in the house. We're like, we've none of us ever seen Exorcist. Let's watch it. And we watched it and we were like, what the f how old was that? I don't remember. That's not the point. I was an adult, all right? I was way over 18, but I was watching it. And I was like, God, damn. I could only imagine watching this back in the day because like nowadays, stuff like that is on TV all the time. You know, it's not necessarily, oh, you know, and back then I could only imagine. I bet you there was a nun or a priest who was like, hey, me or in God's name, whatever. And you know, that leads me to the biggest question, the question I love to ask, which sometimes I forget. It's not on purpose. I just get up here. And I start chatting with y'all and I, I get lost in the sauce. But is this movie rewatchable? And more so, being a retro rewind, did this movie stand the test of time? I think both those answers are easy. However, probably not quite what most people expect. Rewatchability? Yes. Not incredibly rewatchable just because of time. And once you know, you kind of know. And there's a lot of plot holes and missing information. So is it rewatchable? Sure. I've seen it a few times myself, but I don't ever really go out of my way to watch it consistently. Did it stand the test of time? This one I gotta say yes to. For one, it has a theme song. It's like Jason or Jaws, all right, or Michael Myers. It has its own theme song. You hear the little, and you know what it means. Someone's possessed, the father's on the way, and they're probably gonna lose this fight. There's parts of the movie, obviously, that didn't age perfectly with time, but it's not for a lack of care or the effects or anything like that. It's just time. Things got better, so things get done better. That's it. The makeup, some of the little effects we get here and there are just done better because there's newer, updated technology and techniques. That's it. So you can't take that away from this movie, like I said earlier. So definitely stands the test of time. It's still a talking point or a talking piece when you're discussing horror movies in general. And it's the birth of a lot of movies, not just exorcism movies, but horror movies in general that got inspired and were able to do some of the crazy stuff we get nowadays because this movie took a risk. So I'd love to hear your thoughts if you've seen it. Do you love The Exorcist? What's your favorite Exorcist movie? Me growing up was The Exorcist of Emily Rose, but I wanna hear your opinion. You know, What's your favorite Exorcist movie of all time? Is it the sequel that happened to this one? I'm gonna talk about that. I want your thoughts, comments, questions, concerns. Do you agree, do you disagree? Have you seen it? Honestly, if you haven't, I recommend it. It's one of those movies that you gotta at least watch once to kind of get into the conversation or understanding, especially if you're a movie lover, especially if you're a horror lover. But you know, I love chatting with y'all. But until next time, stay safe, be well, y con mucho amor, adios.